What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be talking about components. We're gonna be doing a component, Angular component deep dive. We're gonna talk about each and every single individual part of a component so that you know what's going on with a lot of this stuff and going to, like I said, try and deep dive on it. And also I'm gonna be talking, I'm going to introduce you to lifecycle methods. I'm not gonna go full tilt into lifecycle methods because lifecycle methods can be very complicated. I'm just going to introduce you to the most common one, ng on init. So as I mentioned before, a component is the fundamental building blocks of UIs in Angular. A comp one component would be like a nav bar. Another component would be like the footer. Uh, one component would be like the card in a blog or you know, you click on a blog and you go to which blog that you want and you would click like a card. That would also be a component. And comp uh, Angular has its own unique way of doing things because it's TypeScript and it's very confusing. So I'm just gonna go, it can be confusing to a lot of people. So I'm just gonna go through each one of these and explain what each one of these things does, like what each word does. So import from Angular core. So this is actually importing from all of the stuff in the Angular module. If you look into the node module, this is pulling all of this code in here. And if you want to, you can right click it and you can go to definition. You can see, you can actually look into the code and you can see what's going on. That's very, very common when you're um, gonna be perf developing professionally, which you will, cause you're an angular.net developer and there's tons of jobs that nobody wants to work. You'd be paid a lot of money. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. You get, uh, what you do is you right click, you go to definition and you can see basically all this code in here. Um, we can go to ng on init too. Even if you don't know what it is, it means sometimes it's good to just go in there and take a look at it, but it's pulling from all in node modules. Okay, so the component, uh, this is in charge of this right here. Many people think that this is some kind of strange uh, JavaScript. You don't really see this data or this data structure very often in programming. This is kind of like a unique, odd, oddly shaped data structure that is not seen very often. And this is what's called a decorator pattern. And if you want to learn um, a little bit about decorators, you could make your own decorator, but Angular does all of this for you. And essentially this attaches to this class right here and injects this um, into the actual angular code that you that is into that is in the node modules i don't know if inject is probably the word the best word to describe it but it's utilizing that code so the selector what is the selector um this is this the selector is this thing very simply and you can change it so if you went in here and i changed this to at pokemon list watch what happens as you can see we it immediately throws a bunch of errors that's because i don't have that but you still get one error right here and that's because it's linked to this and if you change it it will break it so if you want to remove the app and a lot of people do a lot of people don't like that app thing right there um you can do that and i'm going to change that back so the template url this is going to attach this HTML. So whenever you generate a component, what's going to happen is this is going to be made a separate folder for all of the UI, the HTML, so that you can inject um, certain, you can inject stuff into the HTML. And if you look right here, we also have our component CSS that can also do styling. So if you wanna style it and you wanna make it look pretty, I'm not a big CSS guy myself, you can do that. Okay, so the next thing, export class Pokemon implements on init. What in the fuck is that? Okay, so export is going to be what allows this data structure to be used, excuse me, throughout your app. Um, export is going to, if you do not have export, you will not be able to use this without, or it, it won't be able to find it. So if you don't have that word export, it's not going to be able to find this right here. So what is a class? 
before TypeScript and before modern JavaScript, there was no classes or you could do classes, but they had, they were really funky. They looked like really weird and they looked nothing like regular classes that you find in other programming languages. And I think people just complained enough to where, um, the TypeScript, number one TypeScript was made, which gives us classes and modern JavaScript now has classes as well too. But what is a class? So in regular programming, you have like let and you ha you'll have t uh, a, a variable name right here and this is a one. So this is a value type. When y this is, this class is different from a value type because when you create a value type, you don't have to instantiate. You don't have to actually create a class. You, whenever you declare a one, it just is created. But if you were to instantiate this Pokemon list, what you would have to do is you would essentially have to do that. And that's what creates an object. An object is so big, a one, if you think about a one, a one is so small that it can be stored on the stack. But if you have a class or if you have a value to, or if you have a reference type, this is going to be a object is so big and objects can be so complex that you are going to have to store this on what's called a heap. And the reason that we have classes is that we could have all, you know, in any program, there technically is no need for classes, but uh, classes allow us to bundle primitive or value types together. Like this is a primitive. This is a very uh, easy, easy to understand data type. It's a two, but a class is almost like a little drawer for all of these values. It's an object. It can allow us to store many of these values in one class. So let's just say for instance, or uh, a, a good way to look at it, like this on init is an, is an object. And if we go into it, all of these variables are being, or these are interfaces, but these very, a class can store all of these variables. And if we go up here, um, well, we're getting kind of into a class will store it, you know, it's just going to be bigger. I, I don't know. I, I looked in there and it's just a bunch of code. I, I wasn't really expecting that. Let's go to a component and see here. Yeah. Okay. So look, look here, this, you know, a module ID and we're storing all of these variables and we're storing all of these values in one class, as opposed to them just being scattered all throughout our program, which we could do, but it's not optimal implements is a form of inheritance so whenever we want something to we want all of this code to basically come down into this pokemon list that we created so just imagine just imagine that all of this code in here because it inherits is going to be in here it's, it's actually in the code right here, but we don't see it because it's being stored up here and it's passed down, it's inherited into our code base. So that's what implements is, that's what uh, is going on there. And that's what allows us to have ng on init. So ng on init is going to be before the actual page loads. So on init, this is what's called a lifecycle method. A lifecycle method um, is what Angular has so that you can execute code at different parts of when the web page loads. So there is a lifecycle method for when the app or when the page first loads, and that's going to be ng on init. So if I go in here and I type in console.log and I type, you know, uh, ng on init fired. So ng on init fired. I'll show you what happens. So I go in here and going to go over, need to get, you know, fire this up and see here, get out the console. 
and ng on init fired and it was the very first thing and it even fired be before all of this so it's going to be the very very first thing ng on init fired isn't that great so what is the constructor the constructor is going to fire before this even loads so the constructor is going to fire before everything and this is where you put um, like we had Pokemon and it was a string here and we initialized it with an empty string so if you were to have uh, if you were to put this constructor in here and you wanted to instantiate this beforehand what you would do is you would come in here you go this dot Pokemon is equal to that and that error would go away so look before that error so what it's saying is has no initializer and is definitely not assigned to a constructor it's essentially telling us that there's nothing in here and you need to put something in here before it initializes or the app's going to break it's typescript warning us before any of this actually happens so we're gonna go in here and then we add that empty string in there and it satisfies the requirement because TypeScript knows that this is going to this dot Pokemon is going to fire so what is this this is actually referring to the instance we have this in programming languages because a lot of times you have state up here that you need to refer to and if I just went into here like watch this if I just went into here and I just did like another Pokemon or I needed to instantiate something it would give another error it's going to say you can't do that you need to it's not the same thing we don't know what you're talking about you need to tell us that what you're referring to is the actual instance of this up here and a lot of times you do that because the you want to utilize this global or not globally as in throughout the whole entire program you just want to use this same property all throughout this class and you use you put that property up there so that methods down here can use it so you can go this dot pokemon you know this dot pokemon is equal to you know whatever when it actually loads and that way you can have other methods down here as well too and you don't have to worry about scope and you can make sure with this keyword that you are referring to this property up here that you can utilize all throughout the class otherwise you're going to have to do really funky stuff like i don't know uh, a lot of times if you work on older code bases you'll see this is equal to pokemon or you will see people doing weird little de declarations like that and um, because TypeScript allows us to have this dot Pokemon and allows us to use object oriented programming we don't have to do that anymore but that was like a super deep dive into components um, hopefully you guys learned a lot from that and didn't get too lost if you guys enjoyed this make sure to hit that like button Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.